planning to do was to give a, um, a brief run through of the background to the work that we've done on the Brodeck project um, in terms of some of the pedagogical underpinning. That's, uh, it sounds pretty grand, I mean, it's just some of the basic thinking that we had, or possibly that evolved while we were doing it uh, over the project, and then to have a look at some of the new stuff that we're involved in, and, uh, and, and a sort of uh, a little bit of hands-on playing around with some of the material, and a request for help. So that's sort of more or less going to be co cover what I hope we're going to do. Um, but um, it seems very appropriate. I, I, I often start my sessions with, um, with um, a cup of coffee, and it, seems, it does seem very appropriate being in Colombia that we should do this. Um, although, you know, as we were saying earlier, sort of, you know, the search for the, the really good cup of Colombian coffee seems sort of an ongoing thing. I, I, I was surprised. I live in Portugal, and probably the thing they take most seriously in their in, 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 uh, in, in daily life is is, is the coffee, um, and you know the value of a good espresso that sort of cannot be rated high. You watch any airport in, in in Portugal, the last thing that all the nationals will do, just 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 as their gate is called, will go rushing to the coffee bar and get that last espresso before they go to the land of United Places, which don't have decent coffee. Um, but I, I wanted to put this one up because um, I usually like to start something I do with um, either <coughs> a short poem or a little story. Um, I do this with students, I do it with, with whatever I'm doing. Um, and I thought, obviously that the cough, coffee's the good line I'm sort of struggling here because I usually mark this page. I must have pulled out the mark when I find it. Um, <clears throat> this is a short poem by, a very short poem, by John Agard, um, who's, he's one of these Caribbean British poets, he's actually born in Guyana, uh, lived in Britain for about 40 years. Um, and he's, he's one of that generation who brought a, a new energy, if you like, to sort of, uh, to written and spoken poetry in, in the UK. And I think he's particularly important because he's done a lot of work for, um, in, in schools. Uh, he's, he's published quite a number of um, compilations of poetry which are aimed at school kids um, and are specifically aimed at <coughs> subject areas. So he'll, he'll, he'll do collections of, of poems about science or about maths or about geography. Uh, with a very kid's eye view on what it's about, so it is, it's a sort of clill through poetry, if you like, um, uh, or, or, or an angle on that. Um, this has got nothing to do with that, this is, this is one, one of my favourite little collections called From the De Devil's Pulpit, uh, which is basically a very typical John Agar view of the world, where he just looks at very ordinary things, but as it were, as the devil might possibly sort of interpret it. Um, Okay, and, and, and it's called Coffee in Heaven. You'll be greeted by a nice cup of coffee when you get to heaven and strains of angelic harmony. But wouldn't you be devastated if they only serve decaffeinated while from the percolators of hell your soul was assaulted by Satan's fresh espresso smell? That's all it is. Nice little way to start off here. Um, so John, John Agar, he's worth looking at. He's, he's, he's married to Grace Nichols, who some of you might have heard of, because she's been on a lot of curriculum programmes around the world for, um, uh, for both teaching English in state school sectors and, and, and in ERP. Um, the two of them make a fairly formidable team. And, if you ever hear that they're sort of going to be in, in Colombia, and they were, they were here last year. There's an annual poetry festival. Hoping for an answer there. Which is not culture. No, absolutely, absolutely. That, that, that's that, that's good. <laughs> um, but uh, I know that he was. He he and Grace were here for. For some big event that was a, that was a national scale event uh, last uh, September or 
August or something like that. Um, and uh, and I know that they've got plans to come back. If you ever do hear that they're around, you know, try and get them to to, to come because they are just so entertaining. Um, they're the sort of people who for for people who've got the idea that poetry is rather, is rather dry, um, sort of esoteric thing. Um, they'll give you another view of it all together. Anyway, uh, onward. Uh, uh, this is this is. Another poet by Brian Patton, you know, one of the uh, Liverpool poets. Um, and I'm, I'm using it because it rather neatly demonstrates some of the problems we have about using um, literature. I hope to define what I mean by literature in the classroom here. Um, it's, it's, it's been defined as, you know, sort of most people when they say literature think of literature with a big L. You know, it's the canonic works um, uh, ranging mainly sort of, you know, from. Shakespeare up to the 19th century heavyweights, and that's literature, and it's a frightening thing, and we wouldn't dream of doing it in, in our language classrooms because it's inappropriate and, and you can't get grips with it, etc. etc. Um, but you might also say that there's literature with a little l, um, which is uh, the kind of literature that we're dealing with, which is contemporary. Um, it uh, can range from literature that's specifically written for children. Um, up to young adults, um, which itself is quite a con controversial area in the UK at the moment. It's the fact that you can classify into those into those particular fields. Um, but it's something which talks about uh, issues and topics which are socially contemporary, but also use a language which is possibly more useful. Um, and I, I, I find, for example, that. I noticed in when when at our council building in in, in, in Porto in, in, in Portugal we had um, in the good old days when we used to have a library um, the one of one of the most popular sections of, 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 of books that was taken out was still by with the Agatha Christie novels um, and I was, was slightly puzzled by this because I, I sort of looked I looked at one point about the idea of well, how how do you teach Agatha Christie you know and I thought I just went through some sample chapters and had a look at Actually, sort of something approaching 25% of the lexicon in it would be irrelevant in, in use. You'd spend an awful lot of energy learning vocabulary or getting to grips with vocabulary in that context in a way that you would never ever use. And, and you know, it, it seems like, a, to me, a wasted effort um, within a language learning context to do that. Um, less so with um, stuff that's, that's written, uh, written now. So we, we, we made a choice about five years ago that we were going to work um, Exclusively with authors who are alive. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, you know, one is one I've just said that the language is likely to be as contemporary as it wants to get, uh, and also it gave us the chance to work with the authors in two ways. One was that I could work with them uh, personally, and the teachers that I work with, so we could work with the authors to develop materials around that. And the other bit was where possible, and you'll understand that financial constraints get in the way. Um, uh, where possible, we were bringing authors out to work in the schools with the with the kids or at our own teaching centres. And um, but I mean, that couldn't happen as often as, as we wanted, you know, as you can imagine it's not a cheap option. Um, and with the changes in uh, E and E and the budgets at the moment, um, it's a bit frowned upon so uh, uh, which is why by the way I got involved